Hello everybody, Blue Dooley, and today we're actually working on the wife's HPI adventure, installing her Christmas present, which is a winch. The RC four-wheel drive, uh, worn 9.5 scale winch. I already got it mounted up to the bumper, so in the video we're actually going to mount the wireless controller for this little guy into the truck. And we're going to try out a Christmas present the wife gave me, which is a new soldering iron. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'll put a link to the soldering iron the wife got me for Christmas. It is a handy little iron. As I'll mention later in the video, I did have to turn it up as high as it would go. I think just because of the gauge of wire and the uh, type of solder I had on the plug to begin with, I think it just takes it a little bit longer than that big old gun to heat up and uh, make quick work of. It is a lot handier than that big gun. Comes with a nice little case. That's the blue and black thing on the back you occasionally see. It comes with a couple extra tips, uh, screwdrivers, some tweezers. It also has a solder removing tool. As the instructions show this, primarily being used on circuit boards. So it might be a little bit handier for smaller stuff, uh, maybe like doing your lights, things like that. It does work on battery terminals. It did take me a little bit to figure out, crank it up to high. But a pretty handy little soldering iron. Uh, plenty of cable so you don't have to be right up next to a plug. Uh, I think after I get used to it and use it a little more often, I'll like it more. I'm not a professional solderer by any stretch of the imagination and had a little trouble keeping that small wire attached, so that's why you see me keep grabbing those needle nose pliers to try to push it together. It would be easier if it wasn't in the truck, but I'm still pretty happy with the way it turned out in the end. Okay, the iron does have to be turned up to 450, which is as high as it goes, to get the solder I have melted. Uh, it is a little easier to use than, uh, you know, 1970 Wilbur electric soldering iron, but uh, despite being through so many moves, I don't even know how many moves Dad had this with him. It dropped and the cases split a little bit. They still make this brand. Well, this brand still makes this particular model and uh, they work awesome. Not friendly for little things, but by golly, thick gauge wire. If you need something that gets hot fast, uh, yeah, that, that gun definitely does the trick. So I got the red done. We're uh, get the heat shrink over the black and try to get that situated. The kit's instructions are actually pretty pretty straightforward and just folded up in the back. You got the cable that runs to the winch, then uh, into the box, plug it into the battery. It tells you how to bind it. And then, uh, yeah, hook everything up. I'm actually directly soldering to the same connection the ESC uses, just to keep the wires a little tidier. So let's get this black one done, and then we can move inside to finish up. Got the wires routed up, zip tied out of the way. Put a little piece of Velcro on top of the receiver box, and stuck a little bit to the bottom of the winch controller. So to bind it, all you gotta do apparently there's a little button, bind button, that's really hard to see. You hold that down, plug it in, and Then push both buttons on the controller and that should bind it. I just hope that that thing's scooted over enough to the point where I can push it. Let's find a really thin screwdriver tip. I 
Let's see if we got a really small flathead. We'll try that. So we'll stick that right there. This might be harder than I thought. So. Binding is an easy process, but RC four-wheel drives, quality control on some of their stuff isn't that great. The Most of the button to bind it was covered by the case. The little button didn't line up with the hole at all. And it did bind this first time, but I actually took the case apart, drilled that hole out, bigger and uh, so it wouldn't be constantly pressing on the button which I think might have been part of the problem I have later testing it out so just something to keep in mind uh, you might have to modify the case a little bit the controller isn't waterproof is something else to keep in mind but I'm still pretty happy with it all right Let's move you out here a little ways. So, that's out. All right. We have a winch. Let's put the body on and see how it looks. Okay, what I think I need to do is get some new batteries for this, or clean up the terminals a little bit. Because it just doesn't seem to be transmitting. So, I looked online for a couple of minutes, and uh, these uh, little fobs occasionally eat batteries. It did have a plastic plug uh, tab in it to pull out to get it to actually send voltage to it. So I rebound it and uh, binding it's pretty easy. It's a little easier if you have a second set of hands, but uh, that's a little test. Uh, the winch I backed up with some washers on the stock HPI Venture bumper. And uh, a little bit of thread locker. So you can put the 9.5 winch on the HPI bumper. This particular, well, let's not get here. So the only problem I have fitting it on the truck was this side kind of touches that rail. So this little bar is pushed out just a little bit to get it to fit on there square. But all four of the bolts are through plastic. The uh, vertical supports are actually pretty close to where it bolts in, so I don't think it'll come loose anytime soon. So, there we go. There's a winch and the win wireless winch controller installed on an HPI. Uh, installation on anything else is probably going to be pretty much the same way, it just kind of depends on where you want to route your wires and things. So, Hope everyone's having a good weekend. I'm going to get working on some other stuff. This will be one of two videos out. Uh, I have the first video of the snowplow build coming out too. As always, click like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we will catch you in the next.